Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video we'll be solving this problem from the electrostatic section of uh, SBT. So this problem is related to uh, mainly mechanics. So do give this problem a try and then check out the concepts later. Also do comment down below if you guys prefer the black background or the light one. So with that let's start with the question. So we have been given a thin uniform rod that is hinged at its center O so that it can rotate freely in a horizontal plane about the vertical axis through Oh, at the ends of the insulating rod, uh, there are two point charges, 2Q and Q. So the rod itself is not charged. And we have an electric field E that is switched on, making an angle of 60 degrees with the initial position of the rod. So the field is uniform and horizontal, and we have to calculate the maximum angular velocity of the rod. And we have to also find the maximum angular acceleration of the rod. So do give this problem a try and then come back later for the solution. So at t equal to zero, just when the rod was released. So this is how the situation looks initially. So the as you guys can see, the rod will have a clockwise moment, which will give the rod a clockwise angular acceleration. And so the rod will start uh, rotating in the clockwise direction. So now let's consider the situation in which the rod becomes parallel to the electric field that it that is it has rotated by an angle of 60 degree so at this particular instant you guys can see that the net torque about the point o is now zero till this moment the rod had a clock clockwise torque and it has been accelerating and at this particular moment the torque about the point o is now zero now as the rod has a clockwise angular velocity at this particular instant it will still tend to rotate even further and at, at this particular situation rod will have an anti-clockwise moment right so now now the alpha is in the counterclockwise direction whereas the omega is still in the clockwise direction so now it will start decelerating so basically what happens is that the rod will keep on accelerating till the theta becomes 60 degree and after that it will decelerate that is at theta equals 60 degree angular velocity omega naught at the instant when the rod has rotated by an angle of 60 degrees is the maximum angular velocity so now we can either use kinematics or we can use energy conservation so Energy conservation would be much easier in this case as we have to find the omega naught. There is only one force that is doing work uh, in this case and that is the electric field. So the electric field in this case is a constant field, right? So so initially the charge, uh, let's say, so le first let's find the work done on charge 2Q. So work done by the constant force is simply the force multiplied by the displacement in the direction of the force, right? Now work as we all know, it is defined as F dot S, which is basically F S cos theta. Now we can write it as f multiplied by s cos theta and s cos theta is nothing but the displacement in the direction of the force. So that is what we'll be doing. So the force is clearly along theta equals 60 degree. The 2q charge was initially present over here at a distance of l from the point o and now finally it is at this particular point. Okay. Now if I drop a perpendicular from the initial position of q onto the final position I want you guys to think about it a bit, but the displacement in the direction of the force is basically going to be this much. How is that? Initially, we know the charge particle was at a distance of L from O, right? What is S cos 60 in this case? That's going to be L cos 60, right? Because this angle is 60 and this would be L cos 60, right? And finally, it is at a distance of L. So the displacement in the direction of force is simply going to be L minus L cos 60. So the work done on charge 2Q is going to be the force which is 2Q E0 multiplied by the displacement along the direction of force which is L minus L cos 60. Now let's observe the charge Q. So if I drop a perpendicular again, this is going to be again L cos 60. In this particular situation, the thing is the initial position along the 60 degree line is here and the final position is over here, which means the displacement was in this direction. And the force was in this direction, right? So it means that the work done on the charge Q is actually negative. So let's write the work done on charge Q. It will be minus Q times E0, which is the force on the charge Q, times the displacement. And the displacement is again L minus L cos 60. So the net work done on the system is going to be the summation of these two, which if you do the calculation, it will come out to be Q E0 L divided by 2. Okay, so now as the electric force is the only force that is doing any work on the system, the work done by this force must equate to the change in kinetic energy of the system. Now, as the rod is just hinged on the point O, the change in kinetic energy is simply going to be half I omega naught squared. The moment of inertia of a thin uniform rod about its center uh, is simply going to be ML squared divided by 12 times omega naught squared. Uh, oh yeah, you have to be careful. The length of the rod is actually 2L, right? So yeah. 
Now, after the calculation, the omega naught, which is the maximum angular acceleration of the subsequent motion, comes out to be 3 QE divided by ml. Okay, that was option number one. Now, in the second question, they are asking us about the maximum angular acceleration uh, of the rod O. So, what this rod will do is it will perform oscillation about the this line of the electric field with an amplitude of 60 degree with, on each side. So, so, initially it started from here. Here at this position, the angular velocity is going to be maximum and when it reaches 60 degree on the other side, it will come to rest again. Now, pause the video and think about it for a moment. At which situation is the angular acceleration? is going to be the maximum. The more this angle theta naught is, right, the more is a torque. Because if you think about it, when this theta naught becomes zero, the net torque is zero, right? So the maximum torque on this rod is actually at the initial instant when theta naught 60 degrees. Okay, so the tau max will be in this particular situation and the torque as we all know, it is simply equal to force multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the axis, right? So now let's just break this force as two components. So the parallel component will have no contribution and the perpendicular component is 2QE0 sin 60 and its distance from the origin is L minus because this force will contribute to an anti-clockwise moment. So we have to subtract that and this would simply be QE0 sin 60 times L. So this is the maximum torque that is being acted upon on the rod during the subsequent motion. Now this torque, I can write it as I multiplied by alpha maximum and after carrying on the calculations, we'll get the maximum alpha of the rod as 3 root 3 QE divided by ml square. So that was it for this video guys. Do comment down below if you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe to the channel guys. So thanks for watching.